when in company of people of the world we should treat him kindly and tenderly, with feeling and compassion, they should be assisted if they are inclined to receive assistance. But if a Christian falls into the society of a mere worldling, it must be like the meeting of two persons in a rain. They will part as soon as possible. If a man loves such company, it is an evil symptom. It is a Christian's duty to maintain a kind intercourse, if practicable, with his relatives, and he must duly appreciate their state. If not religious, they cannot see and feel and taste his enjoyments. They accommodate themselves to him, and he accommodates himself to them. It is much a matter of accommodation on both sides. Avoid disgusting such friends unnecessarily. A precise man, for instance, must be humoured. Your friends set down your religion, perhaps, as a case of humour. Cultivate good sense. If your friends perceive you weak in any part of your views and conduct, they will think you weak in your religion. Avoid vain jangling. There is a disposition in such friends to avoid important and pinching truth. 